Hi, my name's Kevin Benison, and I'm the lead trainer and managing director of Esther We Are Training Limited here in the UK. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial and welcome. So all we're going to be covering is working out sling length for balanced loads, so symmetrical slinging methods. We're not going to be covering unbalanced loads in this tutorial. We'll do that in a different one. That would present us with an asymmetrical slinging method and we'd have to go into trigonometry to work out our sling length. So we're just going to be focusing on balanced loads in this uh, tutorial. So we've got our load here and we've got our sling legs. So firstly, just understanding why it's important to get our sling length right. So, between our sling legs, we've got what we call the included angle, okay, and then we also may need to pay attention to the beta angle. So, if we've got a balanced load, the included angle is suitable to use, because each sling will be at the same angle. If we've got an unbalanced load, then we would need to focus on the beta angle because each sling would be at a different angle from the vertical. For a balanced load, whatever your beta angle is, then the included angle will just be twice that. So for example, 20 degree beta, you've then got a 40 degree included angle. Now for those of you watching in the United States and Canada, first of all, welcome and thank you, um, and indeed any other countries that adopt similar standards, you'll find that your beta angle is taken from the horizontal. So just to avoid any transatlantic confusion when I'm talking about the, the beta angle, we're going to be referring to the angle from the vertical. That's what we use in the UK and Europe. So we'll get rid of that. <clears throat> now, the reason that the angle is important is because the greater the angle, the more we're pulling out on the slings as well as down, which is increasing the tension that's going through the sling. It's increasing the force. So when you start getting to extreme angles, there's far more tension in the sling legs than what there is at the vertical position. That's why the angle is important. So as far as the included angle is concerned, well, we'll have a maximum recommended included angle of 90 degrees. If your accessories are marked to do so, you can go beyond that if, as I say, if marked to do so. Okay, and that would give us a maximum included angle of 120 or 60 degree beta. So focusing on recommendations, uh, we've got a maximum beta angle of 45 and maximum recommended included angle of 90. So, also just be careful if you are going beyond 90, even if your accessories are rated, just consider whether your load can actually compo uh, cope with that additional force as well, because that will be under greater pressure too. So, getting our sling length right. Well, one quick check we can do if we've picked the load up and we want to verify that we are within our 90 degree included angle. An easy way to do that is just use something with a right angle. So you pick your load up, you stand side on to the greatest angle and you can use something like a credit card or indeed just a bit of paper. So pick the load up and then use something to compare against it to see whether, whether you're within 90 degrees or not. Very easy way. <clears throat> During the planning phase, when we're selecting our slings, we're going to have to work that out. So the important thing to us is how far apart those legs are positioned. Now, that will be dictated by where your connection points are, are on the load, or indeed if you're going around the load and then applying a choke hitch, it's how far apart your choke hitches are. That's what's important to us. So we're going to refer to that as the D distance, the D dimension. D represents distance between connection points. What we're trying to work out is the leg length. So L 
represents leg length. Now, in some cases, it may be required to remain within an alpha angle, <coughs> an included angle of 60 degrees, for uh, some loads to avoid too much compressive force, or you're trying to buckle the load, the greater the angle you go. And indeed, some spreader beams as well, like the modulus systems, the, those actually specify for their, their full rating for the top slings to be within 60 degree included angle, which is often overlooked. So for 60 degrees, it's very simple. There are, of course, 180 degrees within a triangle. So if we've got a balanced load and we've got 60 degrees up here, that leaves 60 degrees and 60 degrees. Therefore, all angles are the same and all sides are of equal length. You've got an equilateral triangle. For, so for an alpha angle to remain within 60 degrees, it's very simple. L must be greater than or equal to D. So if we've got a D distance of 6 metres, our sling lengths just need to be at least 6 metres in that case to remain within 60 degrees. Now, as I say, 90 degrees is our maximum recommended included angle. So if you were going to go up to your 90 degrees, it's a little bit trickier than uh, 60. But we're not going to go into the complexities of it. It's all based on the sine value of a 45 degree angle, okay? But all we're going to do is we're going to take, find out what D is, and then we're going to divide that by 1.4. And that will give us our minimum length of L, the minimum leg length. So if we want our alpha angle to be equal to or less than 90 degrees, L equals D divided by 1.4. So very simply then, if we've got a D distance of 14 metres, divide that by 1.4, that gives us a minimum required sling length of 10 metres. That would keep us just inside 90 degrees. So that's quite simple for a two-dimensional view. We're going to look at four-point lifts in a moment. If you want, just pause and take down some information because I'm about to clear the board to move on to a four-point lift. So when I said I was going to stop to clear the board uh, during the video, the continuity director, who I think has OCD by the way, uh, just about had a heart attack. But of course I didn't really think that you guys would want to wait while I was having a bit of a clear of the board. Um, so moving on then, we looked at our two-dimensional view before. Now, if we've got a four-point lift, let's consider we're looking at our load from above. We're looking down on it. So we've got our four connection points, one on each corner of the load, as you can see, represented by this. Often overlooked by many experienced people as well is the simple fact that our greatest distance between our slings comes between diagonally opposite corners. Many people just assume that it's along the length of the load. Of course, it's diagonally opposite corners. When you were getting taught about crossing the road as a kid, many of us, you know, were told to walk straight across rather than diagonally because it's a shorter distance when you go straight across. Very simple principle. So what we are looking to do then is to get our D distance between diagonally opposite corners. Once we get that, then we can apply the same rule that we did before to work out our sling length. So, there's a few ways of doing that. A couple of simple ways, first of all. If you're on site with the load, just get your measuring tape out and measure diagonally across the load. Then you can use that to work out your sling length. Or, you could draw the load to scale and then use your scale rule and measure that across the diagonal uh, distance of the load and use that to work out your sling length. Or 
during the planning phase, it may be uh, more appropriate to use Pythagoras theorem. For many, it might sound a little bit tricky. Actually, it's reasonably straightforward when you break it down. So, what Pythagoras sussed out uh, was that when you've got a right angle triangle, which we do here, if you take that, that's a right angle triangle. When we look at the hypotenuse, if we are trying to identify the length of the hypotenuse, which D is for us, that's the hypotenuse of that triangle, the longest side. If you then have a look at uh, the square area created by each of the two small sides, so for simplicity, if we've got 5 metres there, that would be 5 metres. Okay, and then on the smaller side again, if you had 2 metres, 2 metres there, okay. When you then get that squared area of those two sides, that they would both fit into the area created by the hypotenuse. So if we've done a similar thing with the hypotenuse, the squared area of those fitted into there, that would uh, be equal. It would be an equal area. So let's remove that just to avoid any confusion. So, let's say then, uh, using these dimensions, what we're starting off with is we're going to do 5 times 5, which would give us our square area created by that side. That, of course, equals 25. And we're going to add on the 2 times 2, which gives us 29. Now, to get back down to the dimension of D because that represents the area, to get back down to the dimension, we need to square root that. So if you're unsure, as long as you've got a square root function on your calculator, which of course is our little tick symbol that's on there. So that's the square root button if you weren't sure. If we square root 29, we're going to get our dimension of D. So that gives us 5.39 metres. So now our D distance for this load is 5.39. Now, of course, you can try that with a number of different dimensions. And you can even confirm as to whether that's right or not by drawing up to scale and just using your scale rule to measure it. Okay, But that is uh, how Pythagoras theorem works. So from there, we've now got D, we can go back to the rule that we used before. So D divided by 1.4 for 90 degrees, or for a 60 degree included angle, our sling lengths would need to be equal to or greater than the 5.39 metres. So 60 degrees, that would be 5.39. For 90, we're going to divide that by 1.4. So 5.39 divided by 1.4, which gives us 3.85 metres. That then represents our minimum sling length. So a minimum sling length in that case, if we were going at 90 degree included angle, of 3.85 metres. Of course, you can try that with uh, many different examples. You can even check that with your loads on site. Have a go when you're on site. Just see if you can get this D distance uh, from the dimensions or measure it. And then apply your divided by 1.4 to get your minimum sling length. The more you use that, the easier it will become. And then if you're not already uh, comfortable with doing unbalanced loads, you can then move on from here to do your unbalanced loads. So hopefully this has been helpful to you and thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you'll join us again for future tutorials.